Welcome to the Brisbane Property Podcast with your hosts, Melinda and Scott Jennison. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Brisbane Property Podcast. Uh, my name is Scott Jennison. I'm the Acquisitions Manager at Streamline Property Buyers. And uh, Melinda and I today, it's market update time. Welcome back, everybody. As usual, we always enjoy bringing you the very latest information about what is happening here in Brisbane. We love sharing the data, but even more importantly, sharing some stories about what we're actually seeing on the ground, because that's always a determinant of the direction of the market in the future. Data is always retrospective, as we point out a lot when we are talking through the data, whereas being ahead of the market, but being on the ground, and certainly that's something our team are very proud of every Saturday we see a huge cross-section of the Brisbane market in real time at open homes, at auctions, et cetera. So we're here to share some of that information with you today. And and it's always good. Um, I'll start off as well. It's always good talking to people and seeing people out and about that recognise us and and um, love listening to the podcast. So it's, it's always nice to talk to people. I spoke to someone yesterday who inquired with us uh, at Streamline Property Buyers. He's actually in South Africa. Um, so g'day to Donovan and uh, mate, thanks for... Thanks for the kind words and listening. It was good to have a chat yesterday. So it's lovely to talk to people and I'm glad we can add that value to everywhere around the world. Um, It's quite amazing that people do listen everywhere. And uh, we also ran into um, another podcast listener at an auction on Saturday afternoon at 5 p.m. where we were bidding to represent our client. Now, we were the successful bidder for our client, so our client was able to secure our home, but that podcast listener got firsthand experience of how we bid and how we represent our clients at auction. So um, please, if you do see us out and about, come and say hi. It's great to to hear that there's so many people out on the ground that do benefit from the information that we share on a week-to-week basis. And we always get a buzz when people say hi and um, just say thank you for the information that we do prepare each week. So speaking of information, market update for January 2024, um, Brisbane's sitting pretty high, um, some record highs obviously during the month. Again, yes, when we look at the house data and the unit data for Brisbane, both areas um, were sitting at a new record median value in the house market and also in the unit market across all of greater Brisbane. So that has come off that strong growth Um, since about uh, March last year, um, and we haven't seen the market sort of take a backward stance since then. The rate of growth is starting to slow down, but we are one of the top three capital city markets across all of Australia that is consistently seeing month-on-month growth above 1%. So that is still very strong growth, and we're going to break down those numbers to help you understand just how much the market's moving in a dollar figure looking at the housing market and the unit market on a month by month basis, because it is significant when you look at uh, that 1% broken down at a median value level. Yeah. So as Melinda mentioned, we, um, we're sitting at the top there with Perth and Adelaide um, as we continue to rise that 1% per month, whereas other, other markets have a slight decline. Yeah. So when we look at the median value data for the likes of Melbourne, Hobart and Canberra, they've reported subtle declines over the month of January. So Australia is not one property market, but I will also go on to say that Brisbane is also not one single property market. So when we do report on these these market updates Uh, in our podcast episodes, we are talking about Greater Brisbane as a whole geographical location because that is the data that CoreLogic and PropTrack group together as being representative of Brisbane. However, we all know that Brisbane is not a single property market. We have a housing market, a unit market, but within those markets, we have different subsections. So we'll have an inner city market, an outer ring market. We'll have lots of different markets that are doing different things at different times. And that is where local knowledge comes into play to understand what you are, what we are seeing on the ground in certain pockets for certain product types. And, and just, just for the people, obviously, if there's new listeners, um, Melinda does write a complete blog um, as well. So if you do want to have a look at some of this information, you can jump over to um, the Streamline Property Buyers, um, Streamline Property website. Um, and have a look at that. Um, And there's all of this information here, there. It's all laid out. Um, It's a good read. Um, So if you do want to jump on, have a look at that. There's a lot of time and effort put into it as well. For visual people, there's a lot of graphs and um, representative data uh, so you can see it in in a different way. So obviously, as Scott said, streamlineproperty.com.au, 
forward slash blog, you'll see all of the latest market updates, as well as lots of other useful hints and tips for property buyers, especially those looking to buy in Brisbane. So hope you find some value by looking at those resources. So the um, we've got some information as well on there about so the home value index, um, and it's interesting that the change on that and and how Brisbane is actually performing that, and this is on dwellings as well. So dwelling values at a national level here in Brisbane, um, sitting in third place, looking at the monthly data. So Perth had a really strong month in January, growing 1.6%, Adelaide at 1.1%, and Brisbane at 1%. Now compare that to other markets throughout January. Melbourne was down 0.1%. We had Canberra down 0.2%, uh, and then the likes of Sydney 0.2% uh, change upward and Darwin 0.3% change upward, Hobart even 0.7% change downward. So some markets, very little movement, just slightly up or down, and then these three markets, Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth, really showing that strong, consistent month-on-month -month growth. And there is something that these three markets continue to have in common that is different to these other markets and it is related to stock and listings. Yeah, so overall on, on the yearly basis, obviously Brisbane has performed very, very well. That's right. Yeah. So when we look at the annual performance in property markets, Brisbane's actually up 14.8% for dwelling values um, over the last 12 months. Now, that's slightly behind Perth, which increased 16.7%. Looking at the annual numbers as well, Sydney was still strong at 11.4%. So if you'll recall through previous podcast episodes, Sydney accelerated strongly in the early months of 2023, and then um, its rate of growth, uh, growth really started to slow down. Um, and now we've got the smaller markets of Perth, Adelaide and Brisbane that are continuing to display that month on month growth. So yeah, Brisbane sitting in second place for dwelling value growth over the last 12 months. And and the, you, you've talked about on some of the information on here, the, the core logic information, um, the commencement of the upswing. Um, so capital house values surged 11%. Unit values up 6.9 and in Brisbane, house values increased 15% and unit values have grown 13.6%. So yeah, the numbers you've quoted there are, you know, the capital city values as, as a whole. So looking across all capital cities, um, the housing market increased 11% over the last 12 months and the unit values increased 6.9%. When we compare that national average with Brisbane's performance, Brisbane has definitely been an outperformer. So the national average for houses was 11% growth, whereas in Brisbane we experienced 15% growth over the same period. Um, now, this is since the beginning of the upswing, so we're no longer talking annual figures. It's since the beginning of the upswing. And unit values at a national level, 6.9% since the beginning of the upswing. And um, in Brisbane here, 13.6%. And this is where we've talked a lot about the unit market in Brisbane more recently, simply because we've had this significant shift in affordability um, and a gap that was just so wide between the median values for a house and a unit that it had to close at some point. And we've seen that really take place in the last couple of years here in Brisbane. The unit market still very popular based on what we're seeing on the ground in terms of the volume of buyers considering this property type. So if we're talking upswing, what sort of time frame are we talking there for our listeners? Yeah, good question. So it's since the um, interest rates started to stabilise, which was from early last year, and different yep. uh, different locations experienced a different timing of when their market started to turn around. So if we if we go back, then you you're probably around that. And I know we did a uh, at la late last year when we did our um, end of year wrap type of thing, or early this year when we wrapped up 2023, we were talking about that early sort of April, March, April sort of time frame, and then all of a sudden we started to have that. From, from memory, I'm only going on an average here. It's like 1.4, 1.4, 1.4. It seemed to be so consistent that it was actually increasing all the way up. Yeah, that's right. So when we actually quantify Brisbane's outperformance compared to the national rankings, uh, we as a, a capital city outperformed the national city or the national capital city average growth rate by 36% in the housing market. And Hold on, uh, the value that we outperformed the unit market was 97% over the 12 uh, over the last 12 months. So that's significant outperformance. Um, you know, it's not 
it's not common, well, it hasn't been common in the past for Brisbane to be the market that has outperformed, but the fundamentals in Brisbane have really been beneficial for driving that market forward. Now, of course, those that are not yet in the market don't want to hear that the market has continued to show this strength, but those that have been in the market have been waiting for the time where Brisbane has actually had this price acceleration. And really, since the post-COVID boom, Brisbane has gone from strength to strength. Um, you'll recall that we had that short, sharp downturn. And in fact, that was one of the short, the, the fastest downturns that the Brisbane market had ever experienced. And that was when interest rates started to increase. Now, it was a great buying opportunity for those that were brave enough to ignore the noise because the fundamentals really didn't change. It was confidence, consumer confidence that did change. So there was some good buying opportunities in that eight or nine month period, but the market's definitely turned around. And in fact, the thing that's turned around is consumer confidence. And I think when we saw those interest rates pause, uh, that actually fueled that that confidence and it ensured that people that were sitting on the sidelines taking a wait and see approach, they jumped back into the market. And now, as we're heading into the early months of 2024, the commentary around interest rates is changing again. And the commentary is not around interest rates stabilizing, but the commentary now is about interest rates potentially coming down at some stage throughout this year. And of course, that fuels further confidence. So we're seeing more buyer activity again on the ground across Brisbane. And, and it's interesting when you talk about that. I mean, you look at Brisbane and how it's continued to perform, despite, you know, the, the cost of living increases, the pressure on that, the highest inter higher interest rates, um, affordability, consumer sentiment, those types of things, but yet properties are selling fast. And, and it's not just on the information that we read here with the data, how, how it's actually what we're seeing on the ground. So good properties are coming to the market and they're actually selling quite often. Um, as we've talked about before, at the moment what we're seeing is Auction campaigns are actually not going all the way to auction. So a lot of properties are still selling prior to auction or they're going to multi-offer. Mm -hmm. So properties that are coming to the market are going very, very fast and they're getting they're getting taken up um, really quick, which is which has lowered the um the the days on market as well. Yes, CoreLogic data has confirmed days on market as an indicator has decreased from 27 days in December 2022 to 21 days in December 2023. Now, one cannot assume that because the data shows 21 days that you'll have 21 days to put forward an offer and for that offer to be accepted when a property is listed. Absolutely not. And in fact, if you waited 21 days, you simply wouldn't buy because what we are seeing on the ground is that good quality properties that are listed are opening once or twice at the most. And then they have a multiple offer situation if they are for sale by private treaty. And generally we're seeing a lot of offers close on the Monday or the Tuesday after the very first open home on a Saturday. There are still some agents in Brisbane that are closing offers same day after that first open home. Now we saw a lot of this in that post COVID boom. We're starting to see this happen again in Brisbane simply because of buyer demand and agents are just wanting to close it off and, and get a result for their sellers. Um, there's a lot of frustrated buyers out there simply because the market is very fast moving and they're not necessarily expecting properties to sell as quickly as they are. So best tip for buyers is to be prepared for a fast transaction. And if you do find a suitable property, whether that's a home or an investment, you need to be prepare, prepared to put forward an offer very quickly, or at least let the agent know that you definitely have interest so that they're not going to accept another offer without actually talking to you. And I can say, I'm not a big fan of the, the uh, one open and sell it, um, but that's the way it is. Um, and that's the way some people go. You know, some other agents will do a open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if they have to, and do a really short, sharp campaign and get everyone interested while everyone's sitting on a high looking at the property, then um, then they can negotiate and sell from there. But yeah, good properties, uh, definitely selling very, very fast. Um, speaking of, um, we, we touched on a little bit there on auctions. So uh, mm -hmm. if we look to some of the auction data, and a lot of this information obviously comes from Apollo Auctions um, and the data that we, we receive off them. So obviously this is January now for the majority of January, there are no auctions because we're coming into the new year. So auction campaigns will, will start, but the auctions typically aren't held until the very last weekend of the month. So this data is reported on very low volume. Yep. However, in the first weekend of, or the last weekend of the month of January, a 71.4% clearance rate was reported by Apollo auctions. And the majority of their auctions are here in Brisbane 
an average of 2.9 registered bidders and a high bid ratio of 70.5%. So that means nearly three out of every four bidders who registered actually raised their paddle. And that's actually a big leap leap from last month in December. Um, there was actually only 65% of registered bidders participating. So we've seen people become a little bit more eager um, that's what these numbers mean. More people that are registering are actually bidding and participating in the auction. So that's something that we're going to continue to monitor once the February data becomes available, because that's also a sign of people, you know, the, a market that becomes more buoyant when there's more active participants at auction. And, and the listing numbers, I know that we talk about the listing numbers quite a lot, but again, that would be influenced by the December, January, because obviously everyone has Christmas, no one wants to open their home up. Um, generally as a bit of a, I guess, a, as a rule of thumb in a way, um, people say, look, I'll, I'll wait until after Australia Day and kids go back to school and life goes back to normal and then we'll look at selling our property. So obviously that will have an influence a bit on the listing numbers as well, even though we are low. Yeah, there'll be a seasonal low, obviously, at this time of the year and that's that's a seasonal trend that we always see. However, what I will say in Brisbane, and this is SQM research information, so New listings in Brisbane were 4% lower in January this year compared to December last year, and total listings were actually 7.2% lower in January compared to December. When we compare current listings in Brisbane uh, to 12 months ago, 17.3% lower uh, total listing volumes. So it's competitive out there. And, you know, when there's a high volume of buyers and fewer properties to buy, of course, that puts pressure on prices mm -hmm. because we consistently see more registered bidders per auction. And we also see more people participating in the bidding process under a multiple offer scenario. And just in the last few weeks, since the beginning of this year, in the multiple offer situation that our team has been in the multiple offer situations that our team have been involved in, uh, there have been instances where there's been more than 10 uh, buyers that have put forward an offer. Now that's competitive. And I remember that the, the post-COVID boom times, it was unusual not to have 10 to 15 participating, but we feel like we're in some areas, um, back in that that really high demand market. And of course, if you're looking for bargains in this type of scenario, they just don't exist. Sellers are not interested in in low ball offers. They've got, you know, nine or 10 other offers to consider. So this is where it's important to understand what it is you're buying. And if there's no demand for that property from other buyers in a market that's so buoyant like it is right now in Brisbane, I'd be asking questions. Yeah, I was at an open on 8.30 last Saturday morning um, and there was a lineup down the street. Um, I actually did arrive a little bit early because I, I thought I'd get in early before everyone else does. And I'm glad I did because when I walked out, there was a lineup down the street. So we're, we are seeing those lineups again, um, not not as bad as what we saw, obviously. Absolutely not as time. bad, but they're, they're back and that's, that's but an alarming thing. Yeah. in itself. Absolutely. So let's um let's jump on to Brisbane dwelling values. And we've seen an increase in dwelling values in Greater Brisbane this is of 1% throughout January. Yeah. So the quarterly change sitting at 3.2%, which is slightly down from last month when the quarterly change was 3.7%. So as I pointed out earlier, um, still positive growth month on month, but the rate of that growth is starting to slow down a little bit. The median value of a dwelling is currently $796,818. That is $9,601 more than at the end of December. So that's a big change. And I will also quantify that three-month change. So the three-month change in dwelling values in Brisbane at the median value level has been $26,000. $243. And again, that's a significant shift in, in the amount of growth that we've seen in Brisbane. Now, there's been a lot of commentary in the media. I know off the back of the December results, um, there was a lot of commentary about Brisbane property is now more expensive than Melbourne property. And that was based on the fact that the dwelling median dwelling value in Brisbane has now exceeded the median dwelling value in Melbourne. So, Brisbane sitting at 796, 818, Melbourne sitting at 717, 250. So yes. 777. Based, I'm sorry. <laughs> 700 and Melbourne is 777, um, thousand two hundred and fifty dollars On face value, people could assume that that means property in Brisbane is more expensive than property in Melbourne. But the reality is 
the median house price in Brisbane is still less than the median house price in Melbourne and the median unit price in Brisbane is also still less than the median unit price in Melbourne. And the difference in the dwelling values data is simply based on the composition of stock. There are more units which are lower priced properties in Melbourne than there are in Brisbane. So the data is skewed. So all of the journalists that jumped onto the headline that, you know, the median values or the house values or the property values or home values are now more expensive in Brisbane compared to Melbourne, that messaging is incorrect. Melbourne still has more expensive median house and median unit values compared to Brisbane. So if we look at the um, the segments of the market on how, and this is always something I've always said, uh, uh, interesting to watch how this does change from time to time. Um, and it, it looks like the the lower 25th um, of the market is actually a bit stronger. The lower 25th percentile, that's yep. right. So that's the lowest 25% of property values that have been transacting. They've moved 4.2% over the last three months. Now, this is dwellings data. So most of these will also include that unit uh, market information. The top 25% of property values has shifted 3.5% over the same period. So quite a difference there. Um, that has been jumping around month to month because mm. when we looked at this information at the end of December, it was the bottom 25% of properties and the top 25% of properties um, that were performing at the same rate. So we'll watch and monitor this next month to see whether we can see any trends emerging in this data. So, and then we jump onto prop track, and, and it's always, again, as I talk about this all the time, um, interesting to see the difference, even though they're looking at uh, similar data. Um, and we've seen an increase increase there in the dwelling values of 0.17% to a median value of 794000 Yeah, look, importantly, it's showing the same positive trend in dwelling values growth um, as the CoreLogic data is showing. So it also confirms that Brisbane is outperforming both the capital city average and the national average when it comes to that uh, monthly, quarterly and annual growth. So uh, house prices now. So median house prices, another increase um, of 1%. And it's interesting when you break this down, I know you, you did this with the dwellings as well, and it's always something... That's good to talk to um, to people. So the median house price in Brisbane is currently sitting at $888,628, which is $12,637 more than last month. $28,163 more than three months ago. So it's always interesting, to, and I talk about this with people when they inquire and when you say 1%, it doesn't sound like a lot, mm -hmm. um, but when you break it down to that dollar amount and say next month, if you're buying at that median price, you need to save another $12,637. Not necessarily save, but, you know, borrow to, to yep. you know, pay that, that amount. And it is something that quite often is alarming for buyers to to learn. And when we're completing our pricing analysis for any property that we're considering, of course, we have to factor in this market growth for comparable sales that may have sold three or four months ago because you can't deny that the market has continued to grow. So you can't buy the properties that were for sale three or four months ago for the same price today. The market is shifting and buyers need to be aware of that. Prop track data also shows the same trend for house prices in Brisbane with growth of 0.19%, again, outperforming the capital city average and the national average as a whole. And the performer that has been performing quite well is the unit um, prices. So the unit market um, and core logic has reported an increase there of 1.1% in the median values. Yeah. So 1.1% growth throughout the month of January based on settled sales that would have taken place in December. Uh, the quarterly growth for units in Brisbane is holding fairly consistently uh, at 3.2%. Um, increase over the last three months. It's trending somewhere between 3.1 and 3.3% each uh, each month, and that's looking backward at the previous quarter. So the growth in the unit market has been fairly consistent. We talked about the dwelling value growth starting to ease. That's being driven by the house price growth starting to ease. So the house price trends, we're sitting at 3.2% quarterly growth um, for the Brisbane houses, um, whereas previously we were sitting at 3.8% quarterly growth. So you can see that the house price growth is decelerating, still increasing, but slowing, whereas unit prices, they're just consistently increasing month on month. And there's been very little change in the rate of growth uh, for many months now. 
So the median value of a unit in Greater Brisbane is now $568,595, which is $7,579 more than last month and uh, 16263 more than three months ago. Big shift. It's a really big shift for Brisbane. And, you know, for those that have been shopping in the unit market in Brisbane, you will see the lineups. You will know how competitively sought after a lot of these properties are. Townhouse data also grouped in with unit data. It is very competitive out there at the moment for these quality properties. And, you know, previously, um, entry level units in Brisbane, you know, would would have started in some of our inner ring locations uh, with a three in front a couple of years ago, and most of those would have a five in front now. That just gives you an understanding of just how much this market has shifted in the last couple of years here in Brisbane. Prop track uh, again, we've shown an increase there of 0.02 percent, um, with a median value of five hundred eighty eight thousand dollars. Yeah, same trend as the core logic data there. Um, so both data houses reporting uh, positive growth in the unit market across January. So the rental market, mm. um, I'm sure you, you're not going to surprise us too much with um, changes in vacancy rates, but uh, it's obviously a very, very, very tight market. It is. Now, we have seen that seasonal adjustment in vacancy rates. Um, so in December, they did increase to 1.2%. That's dropped back down in January to 1%. This is quite normal. It doesn't necessarily mean that all of a sudden we've got a lot more properties available, but generally a lot of the tenancy agreements throughout uh, Brisbane or, or really throughout uh, any part of Australia, tenancy agreements agreements are quite often drawn up to expire or renew around that Christmas New Year period. And January is one of the peak seasons for new tenancies being entered into. Uh, what that means is that any properties where tenants are moving out, they're going to be advertised online during December. It does not necessarily mean that they're going to be vacant properties, but they will skew that vacancy rate data because that is an indication of the properties that are available to rent, that is advertised to rent. Um, at a particular point in time. So again, understanding the meaning of the data can really make a big difference in in interpreting what the the meaning is. So seasonal trend increased to 1.2% in December. That's dropped back down to 1%. So still really tight, still very difficult to secure a quality uh, property. If you are a tenant, it's tough out there. And the house rents, they've increased 6.8% across Brisbane over the last 12 months. And the unit rents have up 12.6% through the same time. So gross yields are currently we're sitting at 3.7% for Brisbane houses and 5.1% for Brisbane units. Yeah, that's right. And so if we look at the performance between the house market and the unit market overall in Brisbane over the last 12 months, just as a comparison, the housing market um, annual growth was 15%, um, whereas the annual rent growth was 6.8%. The unit market annual price growth was 13.6% and rent growth was 12.6%. And obviously the unit market also delivering higher returns. Uh, so an easier hold in a higher interest rate environment. So they're sitting at yields of 5.1% compared to the housing market at 3.7%. So um, really interesting when we're looking back at the last 12 months, uh, because yeah, Whilst the capital growth in both segments of the market was fairly similar, we're still seeing that stronger upward pressure on rents in the unit market compared to the housing market. So can you give us a little bit of a breakdown on the vacancy rates throughout Greater Brisbane? Yeah, and of course, this is also going to be an indication of where you're going to see more upward pressure on rents dependent on affordability constraints, of course. So for example, in Beanley, um, we saw vacancy rates in December at 1.7%, which is a little elevated, but that dropped back down to 1.3% in January. In the CBD, the centre of Brisbane, vacancy in December hit 2.5%. That's dropped a further 0.7% now that we're back in January, and now vacancy rates are sitting at 1.8%. East Brisbane, December was 1.1%. January is now 0.9%. Inner Brisbane suburbs, December was 1.5% vacancy rate. We're now in January sitting at 1.3%. Ipswich, 1.2% in December. That's dropped back down under 1%. So that's sitting at 0.9% now. In the northern Brisbane suburbs, vacancy in December, 0.9%. January, 0.7%. You will recall those um, suburbs that we talked about a few episodes ago that have experienced the strongest rental price growth in Brisbane. 
in the northern Brisbane suburbs, and we are still seeing the tightest vacancy in these areas, and therefore that price pressure is likely to continue to put upward pressure on rents in these locations. So, yeah, the tightest tenancy, or rather the tightest vacancy rates in all of Greater Brisbane are currently in those North Brisbane suburbs. Southeast Brisbane, vacancy rates in December were 1%, 0.9% in January. So Southern Brisbane went from 1.2% in December to 0.9% in January. And the final region that we talk through is West Brisbane. Uh, that's currently 1.1% and that's down from 1.3% where it was in December. So every region across all of Greater Brisbane had a decline in vacancy between December and January and that is a result of that seasonal trend that we talked about. Yeah, very, very tight in the uh, in, in the rental market for sure. Um, before we get on to the summary, um, obviously I, I'm going to tell everyone the weather up here in Brisbane and it has cooled down a little bit. We think it's cooled down anyway. So for anyone that was holidaying up here over the uh, the Christmas period, um, that hot humidity has definitely settled down a bit. Um, it's it's we, I feel a little bit fresh when I jump in the water at the morning for my morning swims now. Um, it's not like a soup bowl. So weather's beautiful, but so just to tease people, um, come on up to Brisbane and check it out. So summary-wise, um, look, as we said, very, very tight. Um, low listings, um, it sounds like a broken record when I'm talking about this. Low listings, a lot of buyers are out and about. Um, so, yeah, it's it's very, very tight market. Yeah, a lot of people actually ask, you know, what what do you think is going to happen in the Brisbane market in throughout 2024? And we've had a lot of uh, commentary within the media about what we think is likely to happen. And the, the messaging that we put out there is fairly consistent. Unless we see a significant shift in the number of properties that are available for sale, we can see only one direction that the property prices can continue to move and that's upward because we've got such strong buyer demand. We need more listings. We need more properties to actually satisfy the, the number of buyers that are in the market to buy right now. So there's a huge imbalance. And whilst we experience that type of imbalance in supply and demand, it puts price pressure on properties. I will say though, there are going to be some locations where affordability constraints will sort of mean that the growth will have to tap out. People can't continue to pay more for certain properties in certain areas because they're limited by affordability constraints. Now, that may change if we see interest rates start to come off because obviously if interest rates come down, people have um, the ability to borrow more and that can also have positive effects on, on the market. So at this stage, we can only see in the foreseeable future that that prices will continue um, to creep upwards, certainly not at a, an accelerating pace, but uh, we're seeing that more and more. Very strong demand, very limited supply and month-on-month -month price growth. Yeah, infrastructure still happening. So there's a lot of things that are happening around Brisbane. Queen's Wharf looking amazing. Um, when you go in through the city there and look across from South Bank, um, it is progressing very, very well and, and moving ahead. Very tight in the construction market. Um, I spoke to a, a good mate of mine who's quite high up in one of the biggest construction businesses um, around here. And he said that uh, they are very tight on labour. Um, and with all this other work that is happening in the build-up to the Olympics, it's going to get tighter. So if you're a tradie and you need a job, um, head on up to Brisbane because I think there's plenty of work for those sort of people as well. Mm. Um, that's been a market update. Um, it's been great. Some interesting numbers. Um, obviously, the, the market's doing well in Brisbane. So um, it's as usual. I will let Melinda wrap it up um, and we will talk again next week. It's been great to chat again. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to say good day to us when you're out and about. Um, always nice to talk to people. So thanks very much for listening from me. Take care and bye for now. Yes, thanks for joining us once again on the Brisbane Property Podcast. As always, if you have enjoyed this episode, please share with friends and family. Tell others about our podcast. Leave us a review on um, Apple iTunes if you have time. We always appreciate that. We look forward to speaking with you again sometime soon. See you then. Bye for now.